important uh, session that will come forward. Uh, I would rather uh, say three for this. Uh, if doc we have Dr. Lashe, it is a great honor to uh, be with you. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, I'm uh, really seriously <laughs> indeed thrilled for this uh, interdisciplinary talk. Uh, having uh, sci scientists, engineers, clinicians uh, together, and that uh, makes the, the talk very much in, in, one, and, and, in, in, one, in one in some respects very much complicated. As you see, I'm going to uh, refer to very basic biological uh, science and concepts to engineering uh, jargons and uh, advanced topics that uh, would be uh, covered by engineers and clinicians and data scientists in a row. Well, I think everybody in uh, every human, intellectual human, uh, human uh, kind should uh, see this uh, picture about evolution of eye uh, from a pigment spot to the complex eye that we, every of us, owe. And this second slide, which uh, shows the embryologic uh, process of eye development, which highlights the point that uh, structurally, evolutionarily, and embryologically, eye comprises of two half uh, segments. One is that is mostly a, an optical element uh, at the front and a mostly a neural element at the back. Here I can uh, probably uh, put a mark here. Uh, to the left, we have the anterior segment of the eye that is mostly optical. And to the right, we have uh, the neural uh, segment of the eye that I just uh, revealed in the previous two slides that how these two segments have been uh, have become fused together in, from in evolution and also during embryogenesis. I shall next uh, introduce you to uh, prototypical procedures in ophthalmology. One of them is uh, the cat the modern cataract surgery uh, through the procedure that is known as phaco emulsification, uh, as you see on the bottom right, uh, schematically, you see a, uh, a device is uh, inserted through a small um, entrance. And it was, uh, it could be, um, there, it, it, it acts very much similar to a jackhammer that is used for uh, road making and repair that is shown on the right top. And uh, you see in the same slide, the uh, waterfall to the left that is the equivalent for the term cataract. And as it is depicted on the uh, upper left images, you see that how a cataract uh, makes the uh, re receipt of uh, the light by the retina problematic and causes vision loss. And you see how phaco emulsification works. A, the jackhammer in, inside the eye emulsifies the lens material and then uh, aspirates it through a vacuum mechanism. The, and the very process is ultrasonic. The second, oh, okay, prior to going to vitrectomy, uh, there is an, a very nice overview of the conceptual evolution of what human does about cataract from couching, which basically involves dislodging the uh, cataractus and opacified uh, element from the light path, as it is shown on the left bottom, to the second 
category of procedures that are mostly extractive and involve, re involve removal of the uh, opacified element from the inside of the eye outside. And the last uh, and the current and state of the art procedure that involves, as I just said, emulsification and aspiration of uh, the um, uh, diseased uh, thing. In this very small video, you see the modern approach in a very challenging case, uh, which has a cloudy cornea as well. You see that how the emulsification probe, phacal probe, uh, emulsifies and aspirates at the same time. Of course, in the modern cataract surgery, we insert a, an intraocular lens, artificial lens, to um, restore the um, focusing capacity of the eye as well. Well, here you see the uh, very momentous time that the first uh, robotic assisted vitrectomy and in fact, epiretinal membrane peeling performed and reported in 2060. And as you see, a robot probe is just being inserted from a hole and it's being remotely driven by a, an expert surgeon. And so this is the second category of minimally invasive surgeries that we have in the eye. And this time it is performed by a tip that we name it vitrector. It is depicted here. It has a guillotine, a guillotine mechanism. It vacuums from here and then um, cut it in a guillotine uh, fashion. And this is performed in the posterior seg segment of the eye uh, on the vitreous humor that is the eye care internal jelly. And uh, it uh, actually, that is the basic component of uh, almost any advanced uh, posterior segment procedure. Uh, as you see on the left, there are different elements that are being inserted from illuminators and the vitrector and manipulators and secondary instruments that might be used by my, my fellow uh, vitro retina colleagues. And here you see the, the very procedure that is just performed by the precise robot. And of course it is, as it is here, the surgeon performs and actually leads the robot here. But this is anyway, the robotic hand that is, perf that is performing the epiretinal membrane peeling. And it is a closer look uh, that how and to what extent the relation between the vitrector could be so close and uh, risky to the very gent, very delicate retina uh, that is the uh, neural sensitive uh, element of the um, of our eye. We just uh, we just saw two prototypical uh, minimal invasive surgical procedures in ophthalmology fake emulsification here and the vitrectomy here. And here in this slide, you see the advantages and disadvantages of minimally invasive procedures. We can say in, in a, an alternative uh, perspective, we can say that uh, eye surgery, in fact, was the first endoscopic surgery that was introduced and popularized in the whole medicine. And you see the alternative um, uh, expressions that are used for minimally invasive procedure in different fields of uh, surgical um, medical surgery. When, when, so when we talk about surgery and medicine, uh, training is so integral and inseparable because of the next generation uh, physicians and surgeons that are required to be trained. And then there are a huge, uh, there is a very short, very, uh, I mean, simplified um, epigram, see one, do one, teach one. Uh, this is, of course, not the case. It's much more complicated than uh, just this uh, simple three-step epigram. And uh, you see some uh, common complications about the two prototypical 
minimal invasive surgery that I just introduced, uh, for instance, in an expert surgeon hand, uh, a complication that we named it as a, as a, a key complication in cataract surgery, that is posterior capsule rupture. It, ha it happens to, to, by less than 2.5% by in the hand of an expert surgeon i'm honored to have at the moment of less than one percent this complication rate and this is this could be as much as 10 or more by during the training process and it it means much on the part of uh, the patients here you see a conceptual overview of the uh, how uh, medical and surgical training uh, is or surgical service uh, could be uh, has a neighborhood with how it relates with uh, robotics or uh, more probably technically speaking mechatronics and control engineering uh, that's probably together of course professor Tagorat you have uh, the right uh, to correct me uh, but anyway, you see how we, uh, the, the, for instance, minimally invasive surgery translates into remote center of motion and uh, some other uh, concepts like back drivability refers to uh, the routines and the space that the surgeon hand uh, actually moves in the space while performing the surgery. Uh, there are some uh, issues that I think Professor Tavirad will uh, refer to, the telesurgery and uh, autonomous robots that is not the main focus of our session. Um, but we are going to further in-depthly introduce the RH Assist that is our um, mutual work with our um, CDS and uh, expert uh, group of scholars and engineers in Khaja Nasiruddin uh, to see university and RS, uh, RS uh, group, uh, sorry, RS group. Well, if you want to say in Persian word in uh, English, it will be distorted. Uh, so it is mostly a vitrectomy training robot assisted system. In, in terms of a stru structure, it's, uh, it's based on a parallel, parallelogram uh, versus a circular tra tracking arc that I've just shown two examples. That is the diamond, which has a, uh, an arc while it moves, uh, as it is compared with uh, Arash, which is based on a parallelogram in Farsi, Mutawazi al And uh, on the other hand, it's a dual user. It is a, an environment that a cooperation, a cooperative operation is performed by the trainer and trainee at the same time. This is not the case in ophthalmic surgery at all. Uh, in, in the classical uh, ophthalmology training, uh, at the moment, at one time, either surgeon performs and uh, the I mean, the trainee, trainer performs the surgery and the trainee observes only, I mean, through vision or, or, or the other hand. Of course, there are some uh, vocal commands could be exchanged, but uh, true haptic interactive interaction is not possible. We have uh, RH Assist, of course, it will be uh, more uh, comprehensively described by Mohammed later on. But it has two modes of trainer operation mode and training operation mode that I just uh, explained how uh, the feedback, the, the, the haptic feedback uh, is transferred and then what it does. In the trainer operation mode, the haptic feedback provides the trainee with um, mechanical uh, touch uh, feedback that helps trainee to acquire the skill. It is an advanced addition uh, to observing the very process through the microscope or through the LCD or a VR um, delivery. 
So the trainee receives two feedbacks. One of them is tactile and the other one is the usual uh, visual. In the training operation mode, the trainee is provided a virtual environment to perform the surgery as it is here. And uh, if you see uh, to the right, this is the training. He or she is performing the surgery as if real, but of course it's not real. But his feedback are transferred to the hand of the expert surgeon who is, uh, whose arm is actually in the real, um, I mean, eye and delivers the procedure to the target. And there are a lot of, I mean, feedback in between that's quite totally different between the trainer operation mode and the, I mean, the uh, outcomes would be different. Well, of course, this uh, final, almost final slide is mostly on the control aspects and how the training um, movement is transformed into the real surgery by the tra trainer inertia and control. So I just tried to introduce you the two half of eye and the minimally invasive procedures uh, and the prototypical um, surgical uh, surgeries that we have in these two segments that is phaco and vitrectomy that actually uh, these two procedures are the focus of our uh, multidisciplinary team in uh, research and development in our research and development journey. And we uh, will refer to the uh, challenges of uh, Hamid will, Dr. Riazi will uh, again return to our family surgery training challenges. And Mohammed will uh, explain further about our RS assist uh, dual haptic robotic assisted system. Well, we should congratulate this robotic um, entrance into our surgical, um, of course, our very respected and sacred field, but we may not be ready to hand over completely our devices to surgeons. Thank you.